circumstances they're not going to stay just know that it's gonna be over soon and that's just a part of life sometimes you have to experience things that don't actually feel that great but then afterwards you have a chance to experience happiness and joy and all those other emotions so yeah number two the second thing that I learned is that I'm actually an extrovert and that people energize me before, I used to think, like, since I'm a Gemini, that I'm, I'm pretty even, like, introverted and extroverted, but I realized that as I started becoming more my authentic self and, you know, acting without judging myself before or doubting, I realized that I really do love to socialize and that I love connecting with people and that's what makes me feel alive and energized, you know, hearing other people's stories and sharing stories and just interacting. That's that's my thing. Number three, the third thing that I learned is kind of like the first, but it's more doing having to do with material items, people, jobs, all that kind of thing. And basically it's that nothing is permanent. Because all of these material things are passing along, um, you have to remind yourself that what really matters is <clears throat> like values and beliefs and good relationships and you know uh, a strong self because those are the things that are going to stay with you. Number four um, is life editing. So basically life editing for me, I'm not quite a material or minimalist yet, um, but it's basically making sure that all the things in your life uh, you like, um, you know, get you excited and are adding value. And the rest doesn't need to be there because it's just clutter. Number five is that personal health truly has to come before anything else. And this is something I'm always, I always kind of struggled with because I'm the type of person that just wants to work, 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 <laughs> and just kind of forget about what's going on inside. And I realized that in order to do, you know, my best job at what I'm doing, I have to make sure that I'm taken care of. So. Like when I get up in the morning, before I can really socialize and you know feel my best, I like to you know brush my teeth, wash my face, get dressed, all that kind of thing, and and have breakfast. And you know when my stomach's full, when I feel nice and clean and ready, or when my head is decluttered and I'm feeling calm, I know that I am ready for the day and I can take on anything. And as well. That also comes to sleep and making sure that I get enough sleep and that I'm not taking too much on my plate so that way I can feel my best but I can also give back uh, and provide value to people um, with a better quality. Number six is basically don't settle. So this can take place in a lot of different ways. Um, for one example, you can choose what is best for you and you want to get into something that is going to be good. So don't settle for less than what you want. Otherwise, it's not going to work out because you're obviously going to be unhappy at some point about it. <laughs> Number seven is that nobody is perfect and that you may create a, you know, an aura. Not right. You may create an idea about somebody and you think that they're a certain way and that you know they're all that but 
everyone is human and no one is perfect. As I uncovered my multi-dimensional self, I also realized that everyone else is more than what they seem seem to be on the surface. And I always knew that, but I guess I also just, I experienced other people's personalities um, that contrasted with what they were showing to others. So it opened my mind up that, you know, I have created biases and I've created, you know, perceptions about people that are often wrong. We're all the same playing field and that allows us to not have to feel the need to compare. Number eight is that people are scared to change their beliefs and perspectives about things and that to a lot of people ignorant, ignorance really is bliss and sometimes you want to you really want to open up people's minds to certain things because you want like like myself I want the world to and people to just be as happy and as peaceful as they can and sometimes people aren't ready to listen and people are scared to venture outside their comfort zone and for me whenever I feel that feeling I try to push past it but I know that I can't make other people change their minds or feel open to listening so yeah basically lead by example and just know that some people aren't ready to hear what you have to say Number nine is that pain is the driving factor for a lot of negativity. And if you understand where an aggressor or where someone's coming from and what might be contributing to their emotions and what they're expressing, it really helps to understand why they might be expressing these feelings to you. Um, and it also just helps you realize that it's probably not something that you did. It's probably something that someone else did or something that they're feeling. So, yeah, basically that. <laughs> Number 10 is that, your real re <laughs> is that your reality starts within yourself. And everyone knows the, ch the quote, be the change that you wish to see in the world. But not everyone really practices that. And... Yeah, I think everyone has a lot of power within themselves and if people just realize that, you know, it's not it's not all hopeless to change things and that every if everyone, you know, just took the steps to make their lives more positive, the world would be just a greater place if everyone's feeling whole and confident and loving and sending those good vibes out, we wouldn't have wars. Because, again, pain is the driving factor, and if everyone is whole within themselves, then they won't feel the need to bring others down or create problems that are having to do with ego. <laughs> Number 11 is that when you give love, you get love back. I always say, like, you know, I wish the world peace and happiness, no matter who you are, what you're going through, whether you're deemed bad or good, I want everyone to feel peace and love and happiness. And I feel like when I have the power to do that unconditionally within myself, I feel people's love and happiness come back to me, you know? I attract the happiness and the love that I give back out. Number 12 is that there is greater risk in not being yourself than actually being your authentic self. And furthermore, <laughs> Not being authentic in your job, online, in person, in social interactions uh, is uneconomical. Everyone's, you know, unique characteristics are needed in this world. And there is always going to be somebody that is going to identify with you. So. I wondered why, like why chemical companies don't have to tell people what is in their plastic. For an aid, neocolonialism is still happening and no one's doing anything about it. Technology, you know, with uh, technology just evolving so fast, privacy issues and so many other things um, 
are coming up and the law hasn't changed fast enough to really deal with that. The 14th thing that I learned is that people are very comfortable watching things happen and watching others play their game and watching number 15 is that failure is a good thing and that one should fail fast and fail often you know in your young years when it, there's not as many consequences you don't have a family or children and all that or a big job that could be at stake or on the line if you start a business or invest or something like that or go travel and basically that by doing things ourselves and creating experiences whether we fail or not uh, we're always going to learn something from it. Number 16 is that a lot of the particularly negative situations that we get in with people are a matter of projection so a lot of the emotions that people are um, displaying towards us isn't something that we did, it's something that they're feeling on the inside and it could be from something totally arbitrary like maybe maybe their mascara didn't go on right that morning and you know they're a little bunked, uh, bunked up about that. You can either take it really personally and hard like I sometimes usually, uh, used to do or you could just realize or wonder like I wonder what is going on behind this, I wonder what is really causing this. Um, and you can just take it lightly, you know, like, well, I mean, <laughs> there's something I can do about it. Everyone feels different emotions and eventually they'll be, you know, back to their old self again and, you know, it's okay. Number 17 is that not everyone will like you and that's okay. It's something that seems easy to grasp, but it took me a while and to really, really accept it. Like, if someone flat out told me, like, I don't care, like, I don't like you, or whatever, I don't care. <laughs> because I don't want to convince you to like me, I don't want to convince somebody that I'm a good person. I want people to just be attracted to me, and know, and get it from my vibes, and from my personality, and me being me, that, you know, they like me, or whatever. Um, not everyone has to like you, and... You know, in business, and personal relationships, if you just, you know, got things with good intentions and be yourself, people, there will be people that will see that and they will be attracted to that. And lastly, number 18 <laughs> is that as long as you're not affecting other people's lives and infringing on their rights and freedoms, never feel embarrassed or like you're inconveniencing somebody by just choosing to do the things that you believe in. Um, cause in the, like in the beginning, when I went vegan, I would kind of feel like, oh, like, sorry, I'm not eating your meat. Like, I don't want to offend you, but like, it doesn't matter. That's my personal choice. I'm not affecting them by choosing to just not eat meat or whatever. All right, those are all 18 things that I learned in these. 18 years of living. I hope that this was either entertaining or you learned something. Um, and yeah, it was a good reflection time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. such like um, a, a 